call me crazy all you like, don't worry, it really doesn't bother me anymore, because I just bought a mid-range B650 chipset board for my Ryzen 7950X. But don't worry, there is a lot of method to that madness, because despite the name, the B650E AOS Master is actually one of the better motherboards you can get for a high-end CPU like the 7950X while still being a great bang for the buck. How is that possible? Well, it's pretty simple. B650 and X670 are a big mess. Because this is essentially what the Aorus product stack is right now for AM5 motherboards. With high-end B650 and B650 e motherboards like this one essentially being a better option than some more budget X670 ones. Confusing, I know, but when you look at the specs of this thing, it starts to make a lot of sense. Starting off with power delivery, this thing has 16 plus 2 plus 2 power phases rated at 105 amps, combined with the two full 8 pins for CPU power, and this thing is actually on par when it comes to power delivery with the X670e Aorus Master. But don't worry, because not only is the VRM set up well, but it's also cool very well. With a giant heatsink and thick 8mm heat pipes, this thing is kept very cool and as you can see right here the temperatures are kept rather under control and these numbers were captured in the case while it's running a Ryzen 7950X so these are like the worst case results and they're still more than comforting for how this motherboard should manage your CPU but it's not just the power delivery that is like top notch on this board the PC expansion is as well, or at least for gigabyte standards, which have been a bit uh, up and down in the last few years. Now, G, seeing how it is a B650E motherboard, you do have a primary Gen 5 16X slot for your graphics card. A PC Gen 5 graphics card that doesn't really even exist yet. So hey, at least your expensive motherboard is future-proof for all that's worth, I guess. Whatever, apart from that, you also have two physical 16x PC slots beneath that. And I sent strong words Gigabyte's way about this previously, and I'll continue to do it. But there's simply no excuse for not having even just one single 1x slot in between that. Why? Well, because we can all agree that a 1x card or a 1x slot will always look better than wasting an entire 16x slot on just a tiny 1x card. That's why. And what really boggles my mind is that while the B650e Master and the B650 Elite don't have a 1x slot, the in between -y B650 Pro does. Gigabyte logic at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. But like I said before, I don't blame him too much for it. If I had a Chinese military over my head at all times, I'd also find it kind of difficult to concentrate. On top of those PCIe slots, you also have four M.2 slots in total, with one of them being PC Gen 5 rated and going with a giant heatsink to keep your hot PC Gen 5 drive cool. But be very wary with populating these slots, because if you add more than two NVMe drives in here, you're gonna have to start starving your graphics card from those precious PCIe lanes. Now this wouldn't be a problem in the alternate universe where it would all be using PC Gen 5 cards by now, because eight PC Gen 5 lanes provide the same amount of bandwidth as 16 PC Gen 4 lanes, but we aren't living in that better, much, much better world. We're living in this hellscape, which means that we do have some compromises like this one. But the compromises to storage don't end there, because unlike pretty much all other boards of generation, and what's pretty much has been the standard for quite a few years now, this high-end motherboard doesn't even have the full six set of connectors that are pretty much standard. It only has Four, which granted many people may not even need that much but it's still a feature that should be there but simply isn't and it's just kind of unacceptable when you're paying so much for a motherboard but hey at least gigabyte coming with the clutch when it comes to the rear io at least kind of because gigabyte's obsession with putting a lot of usb type a is still very strong here with a total of 12 12 usb type a ports with four of them being USB Gen 2. That should be more than enough for most people, and if you need any more, there's even a USB Type-C port at the back. But while that's fine, alongside the fantastic 2.5 gig Ethernet and Wi-Fi 6E, there's some other very annoying stuff about the rear I.O., starting with the onboard graphics. Granted, if you are going for such an expensive move board, odds are you don't need onboard graphics, but at least put both HDMI and DisplayPort there because as it is right now, you only have HDMI, which you'd imagine that as a HDMI supremacist I'd approve of, but the thing is that even more budget boards have both HDMI and DisplayPort, 
So again, I have no idea how Gearbyte have just these big omissions and features above them once again being either distracted by the threat of war or getting too drunk at the afterwork parties. Either way, not cool Gearbyte. What's also not cool is the insistence on the fact that we only need a whopping three audio options at the back with a line in, line out and optical spin if and that is it. Gigabyte trying to reinvent the wheel but making it worse is just nothing but going backwards and the Realtek ALC 1220VB codec doesn't make it better. Despite all of that, I kind of can't stay mad at this board. Because Gigabyte do make so many mistakes but I don't know if it's just Stockholm Syndrome but I just cannot stay mad on a motherboard that looks so good. Because Gigabyte probably have the best looking motherboards this generation, like it or not. Despite all of their mistakes, something keeps me coming back. But what helps me ensure that this motherboard looks as good as possible is my special Niwa Lightbox, which Niwa were kind enough to send over for this video. It's been a huge help in the process of making this video, and it is super easy to set up, so I had up and running in no time. So if you want to get one yourself, then make sure to use the links in the video description below. Add to that, 10 internal PWM headers and 5 RGB headers including addressable ones plus a lot of internal USB headers as well including USB-C plus debug LEDs and a debug code screen and you have one fantastic motherboard. But that of course leads to the obvious question of why go for this one? Why go for a B650, an entry level chipset when you can just get the X670E Master instead which this board shares most features with? But here's the main factor that makes it special. Pun is intended by the way, because that factor is the form factor, because this is an 80x mobile board, while the X670E Master and Extreme are E80x. In fact, most high-end X670E motherboards are all E80X, which means that people who want to build in slightly smaller cases are kind of running out of options for good boards that still have the features they need, but at a simply smaller footprint. That is where this mobile board comes in. That is where it truly shines, because this is one of the best ATX motherboards you can get for your Ryzen 7000 CPU. And that is where the value proposition truly shines for this motherboard. Now granted, a lot of it comes from the fact that it simply does not have a lot of competition. High-end, non-EATX boards are becoming slightly rare, and that is an issue. And because of it, we do allow Gigabyte to get away so many horrible mistakes. But that's doesn't really matter, and that's not even mentioning the price. Seeing how it is much cheaper than stuff like the X670E Aeros Master anyway. Which, despite the price, still makes it a pretty good value board if you're looking for something for your upcoming Ryzen 7000 build. And if you want to grab this mobile board, then Amazon links to it are going to be down in the video description below. And if you want to help support this channel so you can make more reviews like this one in the future, because hey, these parts are expensive then make sure to check out our Patreon, because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way, or you get awesome perks as well. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, Oki B, Justin Rage, Ella Vroniak, Barnish Velko, Max Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so, so much, support truly goes a long way. Down here you can find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.